What's up guys, Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance, and check it out. What do we got? Wine guards, wine guards, everything from lawn to snow. Hey, so what's up guys, Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, today's video, we're gonna be doing some maintenance on the inside of the enclosed trailer, but before we do, I've gotta step up at Wine Guards and get some oil for the lawnmower, a much needed oil change. Now, before we run in there, I gotta share a quick story with you guys. So of course, just like at the last minute when I decided to do a lot of things, I went on the highway to come up to Wine Guards, and of course, I got pulled over by a state trooper. Now, I don't know if you guys can relate, but it's one of those situations where when you get pulled over, my heart rate goes from about 60 resting to about 160, 175 beats per minute pretty much instantaneously. Thankfully, everything in the trailer was compliant. A lot of you guys have asked questions like this before. Hey, Brian, is your truck and trailer, uh, do I need DOT numbers? Well, here's the answer for you guys, which I already knew, and that's why I wasn't freaking out too bad internally, but with my truck and trailer set up, the uh, sticker that's inside the door jam says 10,000. The trailer, as well, says 7,000 on the tongue. That right there is 7,000. Now, I do need to have my chauffeur's uh, license and I do have to have my medical card because we're using it the whole uh, setup for business. But at the same point, we do not need to have DOT numbers unless you're over 26,001 pounds, according to the state trooper and the handbook, which I did study back and forth. Now, a lot of you guys always ask me, hey, what's the rules for DOT numbers for our rigs? Well, it depends and it changes from state to state. That's why it's always a good idea to check with your state troopers and uh, your police departments. And that way you're in your compliance with your local and state and even federal laws. Now, I will say this though, and I'm glad that they did not open the enclosed trailer because of course, this is the one time where I was going to shuttle to the storage yard to go change my lawnmower blades on my lawnmower four minutes down the road, not even, and I did not strap down my lawnmower while I was on the highway. That could have been a potentially huge ticket. Guys, maybe $500, so if you do go on any major roads, and I always do this, and this is the one time where I just last minute decided to go do an oil change. I didn't strap the lawnmower down and you know what? I didn't. And thank God he didn't go inside that. So thankfully, all things being said, we dodged a bullet on that one. But hey, enough of me rambling. Let's go into wine guards. Let's go check out some equipment. Let's go buy some oil and let's do an oil change and some much needed maintenance on all the equipment. Wine guards, wine guards, everything from lawn to snow. All right guys, here's the inside of my dealer. Check that out. All right, so now you guys always wonder why I come up here. I end up spending like a hundred bucks every time, right? This dealer is huge. All the new lawnmowers, looking fresh. Look at the paint, beautiful. Oh, here's our Honda HRX 217s. A lot of you guys love using these. Let's go shopping. What do you guys want? Laser ZS, Laser Z, E. This is what I was looking at, the, uh, the Bulldog. I don't know, what do you guys think? I got about four or five months left on my lawnmower before it's finally paid off, including the aerator. I'm so jacked, so we'll have that huge bill. It's like $500 a month. That'll be gone by uh, November, December with leaf cleanups and definitely with snow prepay money. So I'm super pumped about that. Talk about being debt free. Here's your display so you can buy everything you want. Put all of our Red Max. Oh, and then all of our steel. Where's our BR700? There you go. Hey, I'll say this. If you guys don't know, in uh, late September, I believe it is, I'm gonna be over in Virginia Beach or something like that with all the steel folks doing a steel summit. So how cool is that? We're gonna be like steel ambassadors and get to test out all the newest and latest and greatest from steel. Super thankful for that. So thank you to all of you guys for subscribing to the channel to get us on the radar for companies like that. But how cool is that? So hopefully we can report on all the latest and greatest that steel brings to the table. So I'm super pumped about that. But uh, we'll hopefully get the test out maybe I think they have a new uh, backpack blower. Any guesses? I think a couple of you guys have commented uh, BR800. Sounds good to me. All right, time to get this show on the road. Look at the clouds. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're about to get slammed with some rain. Of course, right when I try to get some work done and some equipment work done. Can you guys hear that? Dude, it's thundering like crazy. Oh boy, it's gonna come down. We're finally back. Now, let's go change the oil. Oh, 
All right. Well, I got my little jug. That's where all the oil is going. Had to buy some screws. And got a Milwaukee backpack with all of our tools in it. That way, we can actually install what we're doing. Now, a lot of you guys saw in my previous video, I put the racks on the top of the trailer, and this has worked out clutch. Actually, a lot of you guys DM'd me on Instagram and said you've been doing the same thing. I got these little hooks, if you guys can see, for maybe about two or three dollars each at Home Depot. Now, I will tell you this. Pick up some extra screws. The screws that they have with the little kit are very cheap. So I went and bought some extra screws because I stripped a few when I was installing the uh, previous brackets. And so I've got the extra brackets, but I need to get some extra screws. My question is, where do you think I should install this? Down here I got the shovel and I wanted to get that off the floor. And I'm thinking about putting it just right over here on this little guy, but maybe putting the shovel on this side. What do you guys think? All right guys, so the first one's installed. A lot of you guys are probably wondering how we're doing this. I'm just using my drill bits here. We've got this guy, super simple. This is going into our drill, and that's gonna give us our little pilot hole. Then we just have our little Phillips head uh, to install the screw. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Again, I'm putting it into uh, brackets here, the trusses, whatever you guys wanna call these that go across. That way they're on something strong. We're not poking holes into the roof or the ceiling, or better yet, anything on the side of the wall. By the way, I want to show you guys something down here. Eventually, we're going to get some equipment defender racks down here. I actually have them in the mail. We'll have them in the next week or so. I'm going to put my two position trimmer rack down here, and that's going to be great for my steel combi and my echo combi. So they're both going to go down there, and then I'm probably going to mount a bracket system over here or somewhere down here for all the different attachments and heads. So what do you guys think about that? That way I can clean up this whole space, and I can always have my combi systems with me in case we're doing like articulating hedge trimming, pull pruning, uh, the bed redefiner, those kind of tools, etc. So, how cool will that be? All right, guys. So, little snafu. I did not actually install it close enough. It's got to be more over here than where it is right now. Darn it! All right, guys. Take two. I moved the bracket from there to here. So now we got a little bit of shorter distance, and hopefully now the shovel will make it in there. Yes, it feels good to have all my equipment off the floor. Look at the rakes. Looking good. Man, I cannot stand a dirty trailer for the life of me. I don't know if you guys can relate, but I hate just having cluttered spaces. This is my workbench during the week. I gotta get better. We've just been so busy. By the way, it is pouring rain out here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's been raining for about a half hour now. Gotta love it. All right guys, so what do you think? Should we attempt to do an oil change while we're here? Got the oil filter on top. Here's our drain line. Ugh. Engine still should still be pretty warm. And then, as you guys can see up here, we got all of our goodies. I get it, it's a mess. Go easy on me. Boom, one filter. They're out of the original uh, John Deere, whatever the stuff we use. So we got the Kawasaki 20W50. Now this is specifically for the Kohler EFI. And then all I use for oil, guys, and I take this up to my oil chain shop, is an empty windshield washer fluid bottle. So this should do it, and let's go change this, guys. By the way, there's something that I have not told you guys, unless you've been following on Instagram, but if you guys can see, we are Gravely Ambassadors. How cool is that? A lot of you guys have saw some of our posts on Instagram. And in fact, in one week, I get my uh, Gravely, uh, what is it, the Zero Turn Pro 460, something like that, the Pro Zero Turn 460. Super excited about that. Not a lot of Gravely up where I live, guys. Uh, so I'm super excited about comparing it to the Laser ZX, some of the other lawnmowers we use. Have you guys used the Gravely mower? That's uh, definitely something that I am curious to know. A lot of you guys love the Pro Stance, the standout lawnmower, but I'm excited about checking out their Zero Turn. All right, guys, here we are. We got the oil getting changed. All the oil is dripping out, draining out. It's pretty much almost done. And then we're going to put our new filter on. Now, I did not mark this one like I usually do. Normally, I put how many hours I uh, have on the unit or when the next uh, oil change should be. You guys probably can't read this too well, but it says 702 hours right now. So I'm gonna put uh, 702 on here, and that means I got to change it at 802. Of course, I don't have a Sharpie with me, but later on tomorrow, I'll bring one with me in the morning. That way, I'll write on the top. And that's a pretty popular tip. A lot of folks do that, but that's a little tip if you guys have not seen that one yet on my channel, uh, and you guys aren't doing that, you can write the hours on your oil filter, and that way, you never forget, uh, was it at 850 or 800 or 900 or 875? And that way, you can always keep up on it and never go too long without changing the oil. All right, let's see if we can get in here, turn this guy. Oh, there you go. 
Now again, rule of thumb, every 50 to 100 hours on the lawnmower, me personally, I do mine about every 100. There you go. Yeah. Little pro tip that I learned along the way, listening to a lot of you guys, is put a little uh, oil around the uh, ring. That way it helps create a seal a lot better, a little bit of lubrication there. And we're good to go. Now from what I also understand, you don't want to crank this super tight, pretty much uh, hand tight, hand firm. You don't need to be wrenching this thing on super crazy. All right, cool deal. And then let's go and install the rest of our new oil. All right, guys, so we got all of our oil. We're good to go here. Now, again, I just dropped this off at a uh, oil change place. They usually take this kind of oil and they all sell it anyway. But uh, we got a new filter on. I got to put the hours on, dipsticks in there, check the oil. We're good to go. You know, days like today, they're never fun, but you know, it's just like the necessary equipment, maintenance that you got to do. That way, everything keeps running tip top shape. For me personally, I always neglect this stuff, man. I feel like I just always am busy running around, let alone for the lawn care business, but then also adding like all the YouTube stuff to it and my brother's getting married this week. My gosh, it's just a crazy couple of days, but you know what? Uh, it's always easier to change the oil, right? As we say, than to have the equipment break down. So gotta make time for this kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys can relate, let me know. But anyway, let me grab this. We've got our impact in here and uh, let's go change the lawnmower blades really quick and then wrap this up because I am dripping sweat. It's like 95 degrees out and humid. Weapon of choice, we got our Milwaukee impact. All right, so a lot of you guys ask how we've been changing the blades lately. And as I showed you, we got our Milwaukee mid torque impact. It's on setting two, so it's not super crazy. And then uh, all we do is get underneath, zip, zip. Uh, put the new ones on, zip them back on. Gosh, it takes about two minutes to do this versus using the wrench and uh, doing the thing on top and the bottom. My gosh, it took me probably 15 minutes to change a set of blades. Now, it takes about two minutes. That's one, two left. All right, so here's the dull ones. We got one left. A lot of you guys ask me, how often do I uh, sharpen my lawnmower blades? For me, it's usually I change them out every two days. Uh, depends how much work we do, of course, but for me personally, about every two days. Curious how long uh, it takes you guys to dull your blades out or you notice a uh, diminishing cut quality. Let me know. So I've been thinking about buying a jack for the front of the mower, but honestly, all I do is I just shimmy the mower from this side where I can get two of the blades off, and then I just take it and turn it the other way where it hangs off the right side, and I can get the third blade off. So I saved 100, 150 bucks on a new jack. Hey, it's not pretty, but it works. And thankfully, it stopped raining just long enough to change the lawnmower blades. That way, I don't have to do this tomorrow morning at 6.30 in the morning. So that's how it's jacked up. Nice. And of course the rain is now starting to come. You guys can't tell, these clouds are actually really dark. So have you guys been using those new hooks for the rake and the shovel? Have you guys been neglecting your maintenance? Let me know, leave a comment down below. 